this. This is my garage. So a little bit of background for you. We bought this house about six years ago. And since then, the garage has simply been used for storage, a little bit of projects here and there, and pretty much just gathering building materials, clutter, and the like. I did make a few attempts at organizing things, so I have this Rubbermaid fast track system to hang garden tools and the like on the wall. I got this rack over here for lumber, uh, PVC pipes and the like. Here I have some uh, sheetrock, plywood, that sort of thing, and all sorts of odds and ends uh, all over the floor. I mean, it's a little bit messy now. Usually I keep it a little cleaner, but you get the overall idea. I got a smoker here, uh, got garden tools, uh, all sorts of grass, charcoal, just random things that I simply don't have a place for in the house, insulation. I have this table here, which is just a portable folding plastic table. I use that sometimes as a kind of impromptu workbench. I have my miter saw on this rolling utility cart. Um, what else do I have here? Table saw back there. This uh, Workmate Black & Decker workbench. Um, some ladders. Then I have this loft sort of storage area at the top with some inflatable boats. Uh, just some random chicken wire, different bins. This is my recycling and I have some garbage, but that's gonna get taken care of quickly. It's not a problem. I have this canopy for working outside in the rain. So as you can see, it's just a storage with a whole lot of clutter, a whole lot of odds and ends, things that maybe don't belong in a garage. Uh, and all this really gets in the way of me being productive, working on some kind of projects. I don't have any kind of workbench or anything like that. And I'd really like to change that. So this garage overhaul project really started a couple of years ago. Uh, there was a couple of issues which I didn't get a chance to document on video. I do have a couple of photos here and there which I'll show. But overall, first thing was the roof. So the roof was leaking. The bottom two feet or so, uh, bottom end of the roof was all rotten out. Uh, the soffits were all rotten out, fascia boards, everything. All of that I had to replace after getting an astronomical quote to redo the whole roof. Same thing with the top over here. So fixed all that. The door completely rotten out, rotted out. Sorry, there was a, this is a new door I put in. The garage door, it was all crooked. The bottom seal wasn't sealing completely. It still isn't because unfortunately the concrete is not level. Um, but I did fix that or rather make it a lot better than it was. Now one of the fundamental things that was wrong with the garage is if you see this crack, the whole back half of the garage, the slab itself, was cracked and actually sinking about an inch. So I had a mud jacking company come out, jack it up so it's level with the floor. It's not perfect still, but it's better than it was. So in no particular order, these are the improvements that I want to make to the garage. Let's start with floors. Currently, the floor is just concrete. It has remnants of some sort of paint or uh, coat that was put onto it. I want to get it ground down nice and smooth and some sort of epoxy or a poly uh, spartic coating on it. Right now, the problem with it is it collects a lot of dust because there's a lot of ridges, it's very rough. And there's cracks all throughout, which also collect dust and just make it difficult to keep things clean. Next thing is electric. So right now, the garage has no power to it. No outlets, no lights, nothing. Obviously, this creates an issue if I wanna work in the garage not during daylight hours, uh, I have to run a really long extension cord from the house to the garage, and then I'm limited to how many you know different devices I can connect and so on and so forth. Next thing is windows. So right now, the garage is limited just to the windows that I have in the door. It creates a very dark atmosphere in there if you have the door closed. Even with the door open, there's not a whole lot of natural light that goes in there. So I would like to have windows, you know, first of all, for my own personal comfort and enjoyment uh, to be able to look outside while I'm in there doing something. But secondly, uh, give me the ability to ventilate it without having the door open, 
uh, or just simply let in natural light so I could be in there without turning on, you know, the said lights uh, once I run the uh, electric. Next thing is walls. Right now, the walls are half inch plywood. It looks like it was put up in a rush. They're all uneven. There's rot all along the bottom from water intrusion and so on and so forth. I'm gonna have to remove this plywood regardless to run any sort of electrical wires, as well as to do the framing for the windows. And unfortunately, after attempting to remove just one of those panels, I found that it basically destroys it because they're nailed in, they're not screwed in. So I'm gonna have to come up with something, whether drywall, always be plywood, whatever it is, I have to make a decision there. Next thing is a work bench. So right now my workbench is just this folding plastic table. It's not stable nor level nor flat. Uh, it creates a lot of issues when I'm trying to do really anything. It's a temporary workaround, but that's something that definitely needs to be solved. Next we have climate control. So I'm in the Northeast US. Uh, unfortunately, our winters are cold, our summers are hot. So it's never really fully comfortable there unless it's in the fall or the spring. And I need to figure something out here. I think the best thing would be a mini split system. Uh, they do sell budget DIY systems like Mr. Cool and so on. Um, and I think that would be a good approach here. I don't need it to be the most reliable. I just need it to cool in the summer and heat in the winter when I'm actually in the garage. Next would be the garage door opener. So this is by no means a requirement. It's definitely a nice to have, um, but it's something that I need to consider when I'm doing the electric, uh, as well as before I put up the walls because I, run, I need to run the wires for the outlet for the garage door opener. And actually the same thing applies for the climate control. I do need to run a wire uh, for that. So I need to consider all these things before closing up the walls and while running the electric. For now, we're gonna start with step one, which is the floor. And I priced out different options in terms of doing it myself. They have uh, the consumer grade stuff that they sell in the, any of the big box stores. They have stuff you can order online, which you won't find in a big box store, which is supposedly better, more premium. Uh, however, when I priced it out in terms of rental of the large concrete grinder machine with the uh, vacuum connection and everything, the handheld concrete grinder, all the different tools, the shoes with the spikes and everything, it really came out to, you know, almost the same amount that I would pay a professional company to come out here and do it. So although I'm a huge fan of DIY, this is one thing that I'm going to trust to the professionals. And today is... Wednesday, they're coming on Monday. It's gonna be raining all weekend, so I need to get started emptying out the garage. I want them to come Monday morning, have a ready to go workspace, uh, and be able to get right to work without me getting in their way. So that's what we're gonna start with, and I'll try to document the whole journey for you. Even though I won't be doing the work, I think it'll still be interesting for you to see how it's done by the pros. <laughs> Monday, I just got a call from the guys. They should be here in 45 minutes. The garage is ready to go. Got my wood rack covered in plastic so it doesn't get dusty. Uh, otherwise, everything else is empty. Hopefully they uh, 
let me record a uh, time lapse of their work. I don't think they'll mind. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> It's been 24 hours since they put on the final top coat and this is the finished product. I think it came out really nice. It's got a little bit of a rough texture. To be honest I was expecting it to be a little bit smoother but regardless it came out beautiful. It looks way better than it did and it's definitely a good base for me to start off and continue building the rest of the workshop. So you might be asking yourself, why did I start with the floor? Uh, it is a little bit counterintuitive, right? So you, you would typically do your walls and uh, any other work inside the garage and then do the floor so you don't cause any damage to it. And the answer is pretty simple. Uh, number one, time constraints. So right now it's uh, October 25th, it's getting chillier and the epoxy and uh, these type products do require certain temperatures to cure and they didn't want to miss out on a whole winter of not having a nice floor and number two uh, the floor was very difficult to clean so even if I would do the walls or anything like that and cause a lot of dust uh, it would just be a headache to get it clean again so in the next video I'm gonna be figuring out windows walls and electric slash lighting maybe not in that order but the first step the floor i would say is a success and i'm super excited to keep going and building my dream workshop out of this garage <music>